Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Uh, many of you have heard that the ICC, the International Criminal Court, put out last week a warrant for the arrest of the Prime Minister of Israel, Bibi Netanyahu, along with other senior government officials. Um, many of us uh, who don't think very much of the UN or of these other international organizations might put it aside and say, well, you know, what's the big deal? What does it really mean already? Check out what Mossab Hassan Youssef the son of Hamas, he was he grew up as the uh, his father was one of the co-founders of Hamas, and then he later converted to Christianity and uh, had a different worldview than his upbringing, uh, where his upbringing brought him. Check out what he says regarding this statement in his interview with Chris Cuomo. The Green Prince, Masab Hassan Youssef, my friend, uh, knows all sides of this so well. His father is a founding member of Hamas. Okay. Uh, Masab worked for his father. They then are in prison. He sees the reality of what Hamas is becoming. He's against it. He can't change it. He decides to be part of the effort to stop Hamas and save people from terrorism. And now he joins us. My brother, I am thankful for you as Thanksgiving is upon us. I am thankful for you being in my life and my friend. Thank you, Chris. Happy Thanksgiving. So on a political level, why, if people wave this away and say, well, who cares what the ICC says? They don't have any real enforcement power. And uh, we know how uh, certain people feel about what's happening in Israel. It doesn't really matter in terms of what happens in the war. What is your take? Well, this is very significant. Uh, it shows you the level of corruption and the absurdity, actually, of the situation. Because they did not issue only um, arrest warrant against uh, Bibi Netanyahu, they also uh, issued a warrant uh, for uh, Mohammed al daif This is a corpse, a dead man, confirmed dead a few months ago. And they forgot about the Hamas leaders. This is their responsibility, number one, to condemn Hamas. Since the beginning of the war, they failed to condemn Hamas under the Chinese and Russian Prussia, given Hamas a lifeline. Hamas leaders are in uh, Turkey right now. It's their responsibility to bring these criminals, war criminals, to justice. And they are not doing that. Instead, they have been pressuring Israel. Pressuring Israel because they want Israel to surrender. This is their goal. And they want to give Hamas a lifeline. Terrorist group who uh, committed the worst genocide of our time. Israel is not committing a genocide in Gaza. It's not uh, uh, ethnically cleansing what's so-called Palestinians. Uh, the crime and the blood in Gaza is on Hamas hands, and I, I, I find it hard to believe why people cannot see it for what it is. Because there's so much death of women and children that are on but the how, we do, how, how do we know, Chris? The, uh, all the statistics of the uh, death the numbers, I hear the number 40,000, and even some people say 100,000. Where did this number come from? The ICC are not on the ground. They don't have their people there to count uh, the dead people. This is Hamas statistics. And we are talking about the most populated area in the Middle East, where terrorists have been embedded everywhere, dug tunnels, used hospitals, schools, any modern army. Uh, there, there is no way for the IDF or any other modern army to avoid civilian casualty. And I think the IDF did everything within their ability to minimize the civilian casualty, while Hamas did everything within their ability to maximize the civilian casualty. Then they exaggerated the numbers, they lied to the international community, and they played on the uh, uh, emotional nerve of, of the uh, well, uh, West. On that level, I do believe, and you've heard me say this before, and I maintain it, I think Israel's stance on aid, I understand Hamas takes the aid. I get that you have to be careful about what you let in because what else is coming in. I get all of that. But the lack of aid and the lack of increase in aid, even though there has been an increase in the complaints about it, I think feeds the perception that Israel is trying to be as harsh as possible. Do you think they should change their posture towards aid and be like, as you reference, America was? 
we were killing everybody in Iraq also, but then there'd be convoys of aid right behind it. I know that that's, you know, that's an odd paradox, but that's how we did it. They are not. Listen, this is another lie. I just came back from Gaza. I saw with my own eyes 800 trucks waiting after the Israel searched the uh, trucks. And uh, uh, the problem is logistical on Hamas part because they steal the aid. Then they sell it to the Gazans. Also, there is another important uh, thing that the humanitarian organizations are not paying attention to, that Hamas smuggled weaponry using the aid trucks. And I saw what Hamas ha uh, had been smuggling up to that point, all type of weaponry and explosives. Uh, so uh, Israel must finish this war as fast as possible. If Hamas continue to smuggle weapons using the aid trucks, then this war is going to continue forever. Mm. Gaza has enough food, luxury items, not only the, bas the basic items. And I saw the items going into Gaza every day. We have about 300 trucks going into Gaza every morning, 300 trucks. This is a lot more than the situation before October 7th. So the people who say there is a humanitarian crisis, that we have lack of aid, they are just trying to delegitimize Israel, pressure Israel to cease fire. Cease fire means to surrender. And this is not acceptable. Because if Hamas stays in power uh, for uh, another year, they will rebuild their uh, military, they will dig more tunnels, they will smuggle more weapons, then we are going to be in the first uh, square again, where they hijack society, take hostages, then possibly invade Israel again. And we don't want to be in this situation. This is a very ugly war, and I want the war to finish. Israel wants the war to finish. This is exhausting the Israeli economy, and we all understand that. But we have to remove Hamas from power. This is the most important uh, I understand. goal of this war. I understand that, and it is maddening that if Hamas wants this to end and the suffering is so real of its people, which I believe it is, mm -hmm. they should just give back the hostages. Exactly. And they have the leverage. All right. Um, Masab, I got to jump. I will call you, uh, or you're very hard to get in touch with, of course, but I will find a way to reach out and say happy Thanksgiving. I appreciate you and thank you for making the case. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, so that's exactly the thing, is that as, as, as meaningful or meaningless as this actual warrant for Bibi's arrest actually is and what the practical meaning and impact that'll actually have, it, is, it does show the, the upside-down world that we live in, that Israel is the one that's being condemned, and the Hamas has no, there's no responsibility in this. They, they're not called out at all. They're not condemned at all. And furthermore, when it comes to the actual war situation, Israel wants their hostages back and they want that Hamas not be in power. Right? If Hamas cares at all about their people, which obviously anyone who's following the situation knows that they don't, just give up the, give up the hostages and, and resign yourself from power. They're not going to do that. And therefore, every single death, every civilian ca casualty, which is in itself a tragedy uh, falls squarely on Hamas, who could end this war today.